In October 2009, TF2 fans everywhere would be greeted with what would become a staple of the game's update cycle. And if we only knew then what we know now. The terrifying Team Fortress Haunted Halloween special was the very first event of what we now know as Scream Fortress. It started a lot of long-running traditions, including the very first Halloween-themed map, Harvest Event, which actually had its standard non-Halloween version released in the very same update, along with Harvest, which has remained a staple in TF2's history to this day in both casual and competitive. It also brought the game five achievements, quite a bit of lore for the game and the ghastly gibbous of all things. To think, 10,319 unwilling souls started this phenomenon of practically everyone owning this one specific hat. Nearly every year since, we've gotten a handful of maps, cosmetics, and occasional achievements. In fact, a lot of the maps added since 2015 have been straight up Halloween versions of maps that the community have made for their maps, such as Maple Ridge Event and Synthetic, or custom Halloween versions of Valve's maps like Gorge Event, and some maps even got both versions in, such as Sunshine and Sunshine. Since 2015, the game has been regularly updated with anywhere from 3 to 6 event maps pulled from the workshop, and now, every year around the 20th or so, we can expect for that year's Scream Fortress to scare our pants off again. But alternatively, since 2019, on the 1st of October, every year, older maps and Halloween restricted items activate to allow for some festivities to begin early. So with such a wealth of content at our fingertips, why haven't I spoken on any of it before now? Because most of those maps are a piece of fucking shit. I was working in the lab late one night when my eyes beheld an eerie sight. For my monster from his slab began to rise, and suddenly, to my surprise, he did the match. He did the monster match. The monster match. It was a graveyard smash. He did the match. It caught on in a flash. He did the match. He did the monster match. Scream Fortress 2018 gave us a lot of the most memorable additions in recent times, including. Die, monster! Goth Slasher and my favorite Halloween map, Monster Bash. Monster Bash serves as only one of a few player destruction maps in the entire game, which serves as a sort of team deathmatch mode for Team Fortress 2. And for anyone younger than 15, allow me to explain. Team Deathmatch was a game mode that was very, very popular with a lot of older 90s PC games. Half-Life, Doom, Quake, you get the idea. And the game mode, the whole point of it, was to kill and to kill a lot. And at the end of a time limit, or when you reach a certain score, your team either wins or loses. Team Fortress 2 never officially got the implementation of a Team Deathmatch mode, and Team Fortress Classic only supported it by importing maps from Half-Life. And for a long time, and yes, even to this day, Hightower was sort of elected as a Team Deathmatch stand-in because its timer never goes down if you just never push the objective, which is why all those people kicked you from that game when you touched the cart. You know who you are. Player destruction differs in that simply killing usually doesn't aid your team score directly, but rather you'll collect a resource, fish, souls, beer, and deliver it to a location to add to your team score. But if you're carrying that resource and die, you'll drop it and allow for the enemy to pick it up for their own team score. It's a constant back and forth, and it's among one of my favorite game modes in the game that isn't Payload or King of the Hill. There are occasionally other rules that you have to follow, such as blocked capture zones or running an obstacle course. In July of 2014, Valve announced their perpetual beta test program, which included Robot Destruction Asteroid and Payload Cactus Canyon. Player Destruction was made from the desecrated corpse of Robot Destruction, and I will not stand for it. 
Robot Destruction was played in much of the same way that Player Destruction is now. You destroy robots, you collect their parts, and you bring them home. And you could even go to the enemy base, steal a large catch if you ran an obstacle course or some shit, and bring it back home. In 2016, after Casual Mode was implemented, Robot Destruction was gone. You can't play it anymore, not officially anyway, only through community servers. And the same goes for Cactus Canyon which is probably one of the best payload maps they've ever made. Too bad they couldn't implement that one. And then, in October 2015, the Invasion update dropped, and we got the first implementation, officially, of Player Destruction, whose announcer is still burned into my fucking brain! And from that day forward, as they say, the rest was history. In Monster Bash's case, you kill for body parts, and the capture zone only opens every so often. And when it closes again, all players on the point are ejected away in all manner of random directions. Of course, there's the usual Halloween fair present too, spells, gimmicky alternate zones, you get the gist. The setting is the gothic castle of Cadaverous Hale, and you're attempting to be the team to reanimate a corpse, Frankenstein style. I wonder what's under the blanket. Sketchek, perhaps? This is the kind of castle Simon Belmont might find his way through to kill Dracula or some shit. The castle itself is littered with references like Elizabeth II, alluding to Audrey II from Little Shop of Horrors, the tipped lid, and even a portrait of Cadaverous Hale himself. It's these little things that make community maps stand out to me as notable aspects of what the community can do when they put their minds together, not you. The community in this case means a lot of people. Void, Juniper, Pair Force One, Don Honk, UEAK Crash, Seti Socks, Diva Dan, Neo Dement, and Colta. Notably, UEAK Crash was the mind behind a lot of other maps, including Trainsaw Laser, and stands out the most to me. In any project he works on, there's a sort of charm that just oozes from the maps he's had a hand in, and it's hard to put my finger on exactly why. If you've ever been even slightly interested in making maps for Team Fortress 2, you've likely watched this series of videos made by him eight years ago, and it's still just as prominent as ever. Onto the map itself and its gameplay, my main problem is this map takes some design cues from, like, Nucleus, for example. It's very circular in nature, it feels like, and it's one of those maps that makes you occasionally ask, where the fuck do I go? The layout to me is very confusing, and every time I play I feel like I end up in entirely new parts of the map that I've never been in. And in this case, it's not a good feeling. Of course, this could be chalked up to me having spent a lot of time on other maps, and this one is a seasonal map, so obviously I can't put as much time into it as I can Upward or Badwater or any of my other usual payload maps. And that certainly aids to the confusion. On the other hand, though, the central capture zone is almost always just a step away, and the circular language of the map makes it easy to know at least vaguely which direction to start in for the main arena. The map is also very vertical, lots of layers and stairs to take to get to a lot of weird places, and that makes it really good for scouts and spies to take advantage of the often vulnerable blind spots many players will have. This map also features a lot of the usuals in Halloween maps, occasional crit pumpkins when you kill enemies, spells, and the underworld underneath the stage. And the problem with gimmicks like these is that, yeah, they're memorable, but they make critiquing a Halloween map a bit challenging. You know, with so much going on, it's hard to tell if I lost because I'm shit, or if I lost because God of War 3 Minecraft Coke got lucky in the underworld and got rewarded with fucking crits and shit! It's fucking horse shit! Although, to tell you the truth, a lot of players are willing to overlook these kinds of things because, well, it's a seasonal map. It only shows up around once a year or so, maybe in a community server every now and again, but it's not all year round and they don't have to deal with it all year round. And besides, when it comes to seasonal maps, we all know Scream Fortress didn't get the shit end of the stick.
The pit itself is kind of an obstacle course. Rather than dying when you fall into this big fucking hole, you get a chance at redemption by running through this death pit filled with fucking pendulum blades and shit. I wonder where the fire sharks are. Your health is constantly drained, and as far as I can tell, this obstacle course is always here. You know, if I had to change just one thing about this map, if this pit absolutely must be here at all times, I would at least take away the ability for it to give you fucking crits. Because if the pit is always there and you can go in it whenever you want with no limit, then the crits being temporary means fucking nothing! It's horse shit! I mean, I'd probably still allow the pit to, you know, top off your health, give you a spell or two or something, but this, this is just taking it a step too fucking far. I mean, it's insane. In this instance, on this map, playing the game, playing it well, and being really good at it is almost as rewarding as almost not partaking at all in the fight unless you have an advantage. It's fucking horseshit. The amount of times that I've been killed by somebody that has crits almost 100% of the fucking time, it's horseshit. It's fucking asinine! It might not seem like a big deal, but this death run isn't exactly Ninja Gaiden levels of difficulty. Sure, you've got other people shooting at you a lot of the time, but it's not exactly inhibiting your fucking abilities. I mean, with a little bit of practice, you can do this nearly every time, and there's no cap on how many times or how often you can jump into this pit, and in terms of strategy, I guess the pit could be used by spies to occasionally disappear and help to make that dead ringer seem a little more convincing. But ultimately, we all know why you're dropping in there. Get the crits, get the crits, get the crits. That's the meta. In my time playing, there are oftentimes some players who I see just constantly have crits. And to top it all off, they last for around 8 fucking seconds. I'm dead fucking serious. The hole is a legitimate game changer. I mean, look at this, in this clip we're losing, and so we decide to say fuck it, and me and a couple of friends all decide to guard this hole, and we ended up changing the tide of the whole game from losing to winning. And because Red could hardly ever get the crits, it ended up giving us such an advantage that we turned the fucking game around. That's enough of the hole. For me, Monster Bash is a hard map to play because, in case you didn't know, I'm not very good at this game. A lot of my time in this game is spent pushing objective, but given the objective for player destruction is to just kill, I find it oftentimes to be pretty hard, but with player destruction, I've taken to simply just playing the game, and if I happen to have parts to deposit when the time comes, I go to the platform, deposit, and move on. Even with the confusing layout, all things considered, it's fun to navigate. It's big, but it feels small, and I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but a lot of the rooms and areas are cramped and made to be small, and the ones that aren't seem to have a lot of potential entrances to be flanked from, and that keeps you on your toes. I really would like to give a more technical look at it, but put simply, I'm no map maker. I've dabbled in it thanks to UEAK Crash, but I've never really gotten good at it. Map makers have gone crazy with the official inclusion of Vscript last year, but this isn't Vscript, at least not to my knowledge. It's just a modified robot destruction to have players drop their caches rather than NPCs. And don't get me wrong, a lot of the maps that have been officially added to implement Vscript are great. They just haven't had the most graceful of launches. Versus Saxon Hill is great, Zombie Infection is awesome, but there's something kind of endearing about maps made without the Vscript implementation. Simple, something anyone can make. I've never touched it myself, but to me, it seems like another thing I'd have to learn to use when classic game modes like this are fine. Just fine. Don't get me wrong, Vscript is nice. It expands the potential that a veteran map maker has when it comes to making a map, and that's good. We've gotten a lot of really amazing things out of it so far. And change is good, especially for a game that's, well, as old as this one and kind of starting to show its age. In a modern Tia 2 era where everybody has to be an expert on art style or team recognition, it's nice to know that at least some people are out there willing to change things and go against a 15-year-old art style guide that is probably also starting to show its age. So, with all that said and done, have a happy Halloween. 
Sometimes it's nice to remember. A true classic never goes out of style. To hell with that shit. Revolve each part. To hell with that damn shit. To hell with that damn fucking shit. To hell with that goddamn motherfucking bullshit. You know what's crazy? That this game even supports a six player party mode. I can't imagine getting one other person to play this shit. I'd have a better chance of cloning myself. But that would take extra weeks of editing.